In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create map animations like real life lore. So to get started, we would need uh, the satellite image of the area of interest. Here I have an image of the area of North Korea and South Korea here. Right, you can see the um, background size. Uh, it's quite huge. So I want this animation to be um, 1080p. Uh, full HD. You can also do 4K if you want, but uh, I'm just going to add in a background note to this. This will result in merge one. So if you take a look at this merge one, you will see the background in front and behind this is the map. So we have to swap the inputs, right? Click on the merge one, click on swap inputs. So that now it will take the resolution of the background node, which is 1920 by 1080. If you still want to change the resolution, you can do that uh, in the background node over here. Go to image and you can manually type in the width and the height. Make sure you uncheck auto resolution and just manually type in width and the height over here. In the background one, I would also like to set the alpha all the way down to zero so that there is no black color uh, in this background node. It's going to be transparent. And since we are dealing with the area of North Korea, we would also need the North Korea SVG file. SVG because we are going to be animating the outline. Um, so we'll need the SVG for that. Uh, in PNG, it's uh, not possible to do that. So I'm going to uh, open my, it should have been already open, but I just forgot it. So I'm going to open a Affinity Designer. This um, is a vector editing program. You could also use Inkscape, which is free, or there are also some online tools. Um, that will allow you to edit uh, vector uh, graphics. So I have this um, EPS file that I downloaded from free vector maps. So what I ended up was I removed uh, the unnecessary shapes and I ended up with this file over here. So you can see this is the area of North Korea and um, you could, uh, you know, take some time with this. You can see that it's Kind of mess over here yeah you can see the outline is uh, kind of uh, it's kind of difficult to see it right over here so i think you should do a, a better job at this so if you are doing this for a client work maybe you should try cleaning up uh, your um, your vector file first before importing it inside of fusion so since this was just a tutorial i didn't put uh, much effort into this but i think you should do it so once you end up with something like this you can save it as an svg file uh, and in um, DaVinci Resolve, you can go to Fusion, Import and uh, Import SVG. Just search for that file that you already saved and click on OK to import it. It's going to be right over here. I'm going to bring it closer to the to the map over here. Control V to paste it. And if you double click on this group, you can see that you have all of these nodes over here. Now, if you take a look at this group, this is basically the same file that we exported. And um, what I'm going to do is um, you can see all these nodes, solid outline, and it's a huge uh, list of these nodes. And they, these are basically the islands. So if I just select them all, you can see that it's just uh, these tiny, tiny islands around the map. So uh, currently I'm not interested in this since this is just a tutorial. I'm just going to delete them and uh, focus on the main area over here. But if you're doing this for a client, then you should definitely... Uh, include these uh, islands inside your map animations. So let's just move it closer to the nodes that are above. So let's just do that real quick, like so. And I'm gonna close out of this group. So yeah, basically we have this uh, map over here. If you double click on it and in the outline, you can um, change some settings over here. If you want to have a different border style, you can change it to maybe bevel or rounded um, border style uh, that's completely your choice uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the background that is connected to the outline and change the color i'm going to make it um, white for now and for the solid color background i'm going to change it to red something like this all right if you want to change the outline width you can do that right over here uh, so you can just close all of this. So now we can just simply merge these two together. So let's connect the group to the merge one. It's this result in another merge. Let's take a look at it. Now you have both the maps and the shape inside. 
Now all you have to do is resize the uh, the SVG file over here. So you can go to Merge 4 and reduce the size on this and just uh, position it where it should be. So if you know about the region, then you should it should be pretty simple. Um, so I can just slot it in like so. And you have to make sure that you do it correctly. Uh, you can also go to settings and reduce the blend amount to see what you're doing. You can see that um, on this side it's perfect, but if you take a look at on this on the left side, then it's way off. So I have to can increase the size and uh, change the position and stuff like that. So just uh, take your time with this and uh, do this as uh, best as you can. But since this is just a tutorial, I'm just gonna um, just finish it right over here. So once you are satisfied with this, then I'm also gonna go to the background over here and reduce the alpha color and probably make the red a little bit darker shade of uh, red over here. Click on OK. This is just a personal preference. You can go ahead with any look that you want. I'm gonna close out of this. Now we want to create an animated outline for this border. And that is the reason we used an SVG file. So double click on this group and copy these two nodes, the outline and the background that is connected to it. Control C, Command C if you're on Mac and paste it down below and just uh, merge it up like so. If you take a look at this new merge, you can see that we have to again change these uh, settings. For example, the size and the center. But since we have already done that in the previous uh, merge over here, I'm gonna copy the previous merge and paste it down below and simply connect it up like so. If you take a look at the merge now, this is how it's gonna look. All you have to do is uh, if it changes the resolution, you can see it's this resolution over here. All you do is swap the inputs. So you can right click and click on swap inputs. In the background that is connected to this outline, I can change the color. So let's just make this green for now. You can see that it's right on top of that shape. And for the animation, we can go to the very, very first frame of our animation or this composition, which is frame zero and uh, create a keyframe on length. So under outline, you can see that we have length over here create a keyframe and set it to zero and let's go to frame 60 and set it to one. So if you take a look at the animation, we should see an animated outline like so. Now I can also go to the spline over here, select this length and I click on this icon that says zoom to fit, select all and hit S on the keyboard to smooth out the graph. So we'll have a much smoother animation. And then after this background node, I'm going to add in a soft glow. Um, I think it just uh, makes it a little bit better. So let's just reduce the gain amount. I think that's a little bit too much. Something like this. All right, that's looking much better. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some grid to this map. So let's just search for grid and also add in a background to this. Because if you just view this grid, it's gonna be blank. It needs uh, an input. So we will connect the background to this grid. And now you should see the grid over here. In the background, I'm gonna set the alpha all the way down to zero. So we have only the grids over here. And in the grid node, we will set the major line spacing to zero. Set the row cells to around six. And let's also reduce the column cell as well. So let's just maybe set this to around 10-ish. Um, cool, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that I get rid of these uh, borders at the edges. So let's just zoom in a little bit and that should get rid of it. Now, if you connect this up uh, to this merge, this will result in a new merge, which is merge five over here. Let's connect this up. You can see the grids on top. All right, now we have the grids. Now let's just reduce the opacity on the grids over here. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit more can see that the grid at the bottom it's kind of visible so let's just zoom in a little bit now in the grid we can reduce its opacity by going into the settings and reduce the blend so let me set this to we want this to be really subtle so maybe 0 0.05 and uh, let's also add in a blur after the merge 5 search for blur and uh, click on add you can go with the either the default uh, blur over here or you can use the box blur 
Uh, I don't really know what's the difference. Maybe box blur is a little bit faster, um, but don't quote me on that. So I'm going to go with box blur and uh, let's take a look at it. This is what it will do. I'm going to add in an ellipse mask to this. So we are basically going to apply this box blur around the edges over here. So I'm going to click on inward and increase the soft edge. And I'm also going to change the width over here, the width and the height. So let's just do something like this. Uh, you can, all, of course, tweak this. Uh, we have to change the width and the height again at a later point when we add the 3D camera. But for now, let's just keep it like this. And I'm also going to mask out the grid from the uh, from in the middle over here. So let's just add in a separate ellipse to this and uh, click on inward, increase the soft edge. And there we have it. Now let's just increase the ellipse size as well. All right, cool. Um, yeah, there we have our map. Now let's add in some text to this. So let's add in a text plus over here. And let's view this. I'm gonna type in North Korea. And the font, you can of course change the font and the color over here. I'm gonna to go to the shading tab, enable the second element, and I'm gonna set its appearance to border fill and set the level to text so that you can get the uh, borders around the text over here. I'm gonna change the color to black and use the alpha as well. You can even make this rounded if you want. Uh, that's completely your choice. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is after this box blur, I'm gonna add in an image plain 3D. So now our map will go into this uh, 3D scene over here. I'm gonna add a separate image plane 3D for the text. And the reason for this is because when we keep a separate image plane 3D for text, uh, we don't lose the the final text quality in the animation. So if, if I would have just merged the text with the map and used a single image plane 3D, then at the end, we had to zoom into the map using the 3D camera which will result in the quality loss of the text. So that's why we are keeping the text on a separate image plane 3D, uh, which will not lose the quality of the text. Um, it doesn't make sense right now, but it will when we uh, add the 3D camera. So after the image plane 3D, let's add in a camera 3D. This will automatically add in a merge as well. So let's just move it right over here. This is our camera 3D. And after the merge, we will add in a renderer 3D like so. Let's hook up the image plane 3D, the second one to this merge. And now let's take a look at the renderer 3D. It's going to be empty. That's because we have to change the camera position. So let's go to the camera 3D node. We'll transform and increase this till you see the entire image. So something like this. All right. Uh, so now let's go to the image plane 3D to of this text over here and I'm going to go to transform and change the position and uh, scale. So you can see that uh, when we do that, we uh, get the glitch over here. And the reason for this is because um, if we take a look at Moist 3D, we can see that the text and the map are at the same position in the Z space. And that's why that you're seeing the glitch over here. To fix this, we have to go to image plane 3D of the text and in the Z value over here, we'll just increase it by one step. So 0 0.001 and this will just bring it right in front of the map. Just make sure uh, you don't go too far ahead. You can see that still really, really closer to the map. Uh, just make sure you don't go too far ahead. If you do that, then you will end up with creating a parallax animation, which we don't want. So let's just keep it really closer to the map and then we can now scale it down like so and we can just position it anywhere that we want. So I'm going to just put it right inside the uh, the shape over here. We still have the animation, the map and animation, everything over here. Now all we have to do is add a, a camera movement to this. So let's go to camera 3D over here and uh, I'm going to click on use target and we can use the translation XYZ to create our animation. So let's just do that. So I'm going to change the Y, see what it does. So let's just zoom into this a little bit using the Z position over here and rotate it around. Now you can see that how nice our text looks over here. It doesn't lose the quality at, at all. And that's the reason we use a separate image plane 3D over here. If we have used a single image plane 3D, then you would lose the quality of the text over here. 
so let's just zoom in a little bit and create a nice camera angle something like this you can also right click in the viewer and go to guides show guides and just make sure that the map is right in the center over here so you can if it's not then you can even go to the image plane 3d over here and go to transform and you can change the position of the map manually like so um, and you can do the same thing with the image plane 3d of the text so make sure that it's um, right in the the text is right in the middle of the shape over here um, so i'm kind of happy with that camera angle so i'm going to go to the very first frame which is frame zero and make sure i'm in the camera 3d over here i'm going to animate the y and also the let's actually undo this and i'm going to uh, animate the whole group so i'm going to right click in the empty area and make transfer group so let's jump to the last frame by clicking on this icon and let's just change the z angle and probably the y as well all right so we can see that it looks pretty cool we did lose the blur that we applied the box blur over here and that reason is the ellipse over here so we have to shrink it down to see the to see the blur in action something like this and probably reduce the soft edge as well and yeah tweak around with the settings to get the desired look also do the same thing with the ellipse which is connected to the grid reduce the size and reduce the soft edge as well there you have it uh, you could also go back to the grid and reduce the um, maybe you can just zoom out a little bit if you want to have uh, more uh, grids you can um, change the row cell column cell the the choice is yours i'm also going to change the line width over here i'm going to set this to one so let's just set this to one on both um, and that should look much more elegant i'm going to disable the guides over here and you can see we have this nice animation going on um, you could also use the depth of field effect you can go to render 3d and enable the depth of field over here uh, you can watch my previous tutorials on how to do that that will also improve the look of your uh, map animation but since we use this box blur over here i don't think uh, we need to do that so yeah that is pretty much it i hope this uh, video was helpful i hope it will help you in your upcoming projects thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one